नमस्ते फ्रेंड्स इन प्रीवियस लेक्चर आई टॉक अबाउट पॉजिटिव फोर व्हील स्टीयरिंग सिस्टम एंड नेगेटिव फोर व्हील स्टीयरिंग सिस्टम इन एडिशन टू दीज टू देयर इज सिमेट्रिक फोर व्हील स्टीयरिंग सिस्टम अबाउट व्हिच आई वुड बी टॉकिंग टू यू नाउ सिमेट्रिक फोर व्हील स्टीयरिंग इन दिस सिस्टम inner front and rear wheels turn through same angle similarly outer front and rear wheels also turn through same angle referring to diagram that shows wheels in turned position front wheels are turned inwards and rear wheels are turned outwards lines perpendicular to all four wheels meet at point o point o lies on the line in middle of wheel base angle a b c and d are angles made by wheels a b c and d as shown angle a is equal to angle c but these are in opposite directions similarly angle b is equal to angle d and these two are in opposite direction it may be noticed that rc is almost vertical to wheel base that is why this system provides shortest possible turning radius mathematical analysis for symmetric four wheel steering system is same as we have seen in previous four wheel steering systems therefore it is not being undertaken let us now go through constructional details and working of four wheel steering systems four wheel steering systems can be mechanical system hydraulic system and hybrid system that is combination of electronic and hydraulic systems mechanical system it is a mechanical system in complete sense it is sensitive to steering angle but it is not sensitive to vehicle speed in this system front and rear wheels use separate steering gears a steer shaft connects both steering gear boxes front wheels turn in the same manner as we have seen in previous systems rear wheels turn on inner as well as on outer side therefore rear steering gear box has different construction to understand it let us refer to diagram that presents two views elevation and side view input shaft is shown on left with input eccentric at its end it has been shown in red for better understanding a pin on eccentric has planetary gear mounted on it that has been shown in blue planetary gear is also provided with a pin that is inserted in slider shown in pink planetary gear teeth mesh with teeth of internal gear shown in green this makes planetary gear to move inside the internal gear slider rotates with planetary gear and slides inside guideway upwards or downwards guideway has been shown in orange color for clear distinction guideway is mounted on output rod slider as it moves upwards pushes guideway in horizontal direction also this causes horizontal movement of output rod as shown by arrow heads in side view let us consider clockwise rotation of input rod as shown in elevation initially planetary gear is in lower most position as shown in side view output rod is also in middle position as planetary gear rotates 
in clockwise direction slider moves upwards and leftwards taking output rod towards left as indicated by arrow head output rod continues to move towards left until planetary gear rotates through 90 degree as planetary gear moves further attains uppermost position in internal gear output rod moves towards right and attains middle position again further rotation of planetary gear takes output rod towards right from middle position this continues until planetary gear has rotated through 270 degree from initial position and has attained horizontal position as planetary gear rotates further output rod moves towards left as planetary gear reaches at initial lowermost position in internal gear output rod is back to middle position this movement of output rod makes possible turning of rear wheels in phase with front wheels that is inverse or turning of rear wheels out of phase with front wheels that is outwards as vehicle takes turn front wheels are turned in proportion to turning of steering wheel turning of steering wheel through approximately 120 degree causes turning of rear and front wheels in same direction this means both front and rear wheels are turned inwards then rear wheels begin to straighten turning steering wheel through next 120 degree causes rear wheels to attain straight ahead position further rotation of steering wheel causes turning of rear wheels outwards turning of rear wheels on inner side may be about 1.5 degree whereas their turning outwards may be around 5.5 degree these values may vary from vehicle to vehicle hydraulic system it is hydraulically operated system as name indicates it is a positive four wheel steering system as front and rear wheels turn in same direction turning of rear wheels is limited to about 1.5 degree their turning occurs when vehicle has attained a speed of beyond 50 kilometers per hour referring to diagram that represents top view of system front wheels are on right hand side and rear wheels are on left hand side in diagram fluid reservoir is the source of fluid that acts as working medium through front pump it is fed to steering gear in diagram steering wheel has not been shown only steering column has been shown and that to partially for the sake of simplicity it may be noticed that two separate chambers are provided in front steering cylinder and rear steering cylinder these get fluid supply at same pressure that is proportional to steering effort while turning towards left or right supply lines have been shown in blue and red for turning towards left and right as shown in diagram vehicle is turning towards left steering wheel and so steering column is turned in this case in anti clockwise direction steering gear is activated and fluid is supplied to front steering cylinder through blue supply line the pressure with which fluid is supplied 
is proportional to rotation of steering wheel as already mentioned this causes pushing of piston inside front steering cylinder and front wheels are turned as shown fluid from front steering cylinder is further supplied to spool valve again represented by blue line spool valve moves upwards until pressure balances force of a spring that is provided in valve rear pump is driven by differential therefore it operates only when front wheels are turned it supplies fluid from fluid reserve tank shown by black line to spool valve shown by green line amount of fluid supplied is in proportion to rear wheel speed upper and lower chambers of spool valve are connected to upper and lower chambers of rear steering cylinder through fluid lines shown in green hydraulic pressure exerted by fluid pushes piston upwards in rear steering cylinder this causes turning of rear wheels fluid returns back to fluid reserve tank through supply line shown in black turning of front and rear wheels occur in a similar manner towards right as steering wheel is turned in clockwise direction this time fluid is supplied to front steering cylinder and spool valve through lines shown in red hybrid system it is a combination of hydraulic and electronic system therefore the name hybrid system it has an electronic control unit or ecu ecu is a programmed microprocessor the fact is that a single microprocessor is used in an automobile it controls all the components of automobile including four wheel steering system to take up further details let us refer to diagram it has an electronic control unit or ecu with two speed sensors for front and rear wheels these provide input about speed of wheels as has been seen in previous systems here too there is fluid reservoir shown on right side it is connected to front steering gear through fluid pump fluid reservoir is also connected to phase control valve through fluid pump and solenoid valve as may be seen there is a fluid reserve tank as shown on upper right side it is connected with front steering gear and phase control valve through solenoid valve steering angle input shaft connects front rack and pinion drive to phase control unit as shown front wheels are turned through rack and pinion towards left or right depending upon the turning of steering wheel in clockwise or anti clockwise direction as we are aware rear wheels are also turned these are turned opposite to front wheels below a particular speed generally this speed is about 50 kilometers per hour but it may vary from vehicle to vehicle at a speed of 50 kilometers per hour the rear wheels are in straight ahead position above the speed of 50 kilometers per hour rear wheels and front wheels turn in same direction to achieve this phase control unit with stepper motor and ratio sensor with phase control valve is used these components can be noticed on left side of diagram assembly of ratio sensor stepper motor phase control unit and phase control valve 
contribute to achieve turning of rear wheels as per requirement to understand how turning of rear wheels occur with the help of this assembly let us go into its details i intend to explain it with diagrams of sub assemblies of components and diagram of complete assembly i begin with diagram presenting yoke swing arm and control arm sub assembly two views that is elevation and side view have been shown for better understanding as can be seen in elevation meshing bevel gears comprise of bevel pinion bp1 at the end of stepper motor shaft and bevel gear bg1 bevel gear bg1 has a shaft with threads as shown yoke has matching teeth meshing with threads on shaft swing arm is connected with yoke as shown in red side view presents turning of control arm and swing arm meshing bevel gears and vertical shaft have been shown in gray swing arm moves in an arc as it turns from middle position in clockwise direction or upwards as shown by black arrow head similarly it turns in anti clockwise direction or downwards as shown in red arrow head in elevation only one position that is lower position has been shown with the turning of swing arm yoke turns in clockwise or anti clockwise direction other end of swing arm is connected to control arm control arm passes through bevel gear bg2 and its other end is connected to input rod elevation shows only a portion of control arm and bevel gear bg2 or input rod have not been shown next diagram presents bevel gear and bevel pinion sub assembly bevel pinion forms end of steering angle input shaft referring to diagram that presents two views elevation and side view again for better understanding it shows steering angle input shaft on lower side it has bevel pinion bp2 at its end as shown when steering wheel is turned steering angle input shaft and bevel pinion bp2 also turn accordingly clockwise turning is indicated by arrow head in black and anti clockwise turning is indicated by arrow head in red bevel gear bg2 also turns clockwise or anti clockwise as shown it has a hole for control arm control arm passes through this hole with turning of bevel gear bg2 control arm is also turned this causes turning of swing arm and yoke as explained in previous diagram next diagram presents detail of phase control unit in assembled form the diagram shows on left meshing bevel gears as already explained meshing bevel gears comprise of bevel pinion bp1 which forms end of stepper motor shaft and bevel gear bg1 bevel gear bg1 has a shaft with threads as shown these threads mesh with matching teeth on yoke one end of swing arm is connected to yoke as shown other end of swing arm is connected to control arm which is connected with input rod input rod is connected with spool valve in phase control valve phase control valve has not been shown as part of 
phase control unit. We know that as a steering wheel is turned, front wheels turn. This turning movement is transmitted to a steering angle input shaft and to bevel pinion BP2 at other end. This causes turning of bevel gear BG2. As control arm passes through hole provided in bevel gear BG2, it also turns. This causes turning of swing arm and yoke. Depending upon turning of steering wheel in clockwise or anti-clockwise direction, turning of yoke occurs through steering angle input shaft, bevel pinion BP2 and bevel gear BG2. In diagram, clockwise turning has been shown with black arrow head and anti-clockwise turning has been shown with red arrow head. Next thing that is to be taken up is working of hybrid system. I included it in this lecture but then the lecture became too long. I face problem in uploading files with long lectures. Therefore, I had to shift it to next lecture that also includes the discussion on power steering. For this lecture, I conclude discussion here. Thanks for watching.